Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. We will be discussing Tottenham's 4-1 win against Newcastle United. Spurs remain fifth in the Premier League table, but what a performance. Spurs could have scored so many goals today. Um, now, we are live on YouTube. We're also live on X and on Facebook as well. So if you'd like to get involved, give us your thoughts on today's game and who uh, was your man of the match today. Uh, Hunmin Son has now provided 83 assists, a club record overtaking Ericsson's 82. Um, two assists for Hunmin Son today, one assist for Pedro Poro, and of course Hunmin Son getting a goal himself right at the end via the penalty spot. As per usual, I've got three very special guests to talk about today's game. We've got YouTuber Holly uh, back with us. Holly, how are you? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing to be back here and obviously to uh, talk about a win. So yeah, no, good times. Well, it's good to be back and, it's, it, of course, it's good to be back with a win as well. Um, we've also got Melvin all the way from Malta. Melvin, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, very happy to be discussing a win. Um, you know, I've not been on for a while, but uh, I was I was really nervous about this game because it's, it's been some poor form and, and Newcastle are a very, very strong team and, and brilliant. We've been waiting for a performance like this for a while. I've been waiting for us to, to have a scoreline like this, so... So very happy, very happy today. And we've also got the man that brings us the trophies every single time he's on. We've got Richard Whitehead back with us. Rich, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, always, always happy, smiley after a win, obviously. Um, yeah, what a result, uh, what a team performance. I think when we when, when we analyse the game, lots of lots of great performances all over the pitch. Yeah. Um, raise that confidence level that had been knocked over the last couple of weeks but yeah very happy always always glad to be on the show chris well of course tottenham Hotspur four newcastle united one spurs went one nil up uh, assisted by hunmin son of course destiny doggy could not miss uh, and Richarlison, uh, of course back in the team today he scored in the 38th minute making it two nil uh, Richarlison, of course, added a second in the second half, making it 3-0. Uh, Hunmin Son making it 4-0 from the penalty spot. And Joe Linton scoring in stoppage time right at the end of the game. As I say, Spurs remain fifth in the Premier League table. But we are now three points away from the top four and only seven points away from top spot. Of course, Arsenal lead the way at the moment. And uh, if you said to any Spurs fan, I think, in the summer... Half, uh, the halfway point, we're going to be seven points away from top. I think most people would have taken that very, very gladly. Uh, match stats today, possession, Spurs 57% uh, to Newcastle's 43. Shots, Spurs 23 to Newcastle's 9. Shots on target, Spurs 12, Newcastle 3. Corners, Spurs had 3 to Newcastle 6. And fouls, Spurs 10, Newcastle 12. Holly, let's start today's show with you. Your thoughts on today's game? Well, it's definitely a bounce back. And I think obviously after the West Ham one, uh, we needed a bounce back, to say the least. Um, and I just wanted to see us today to actually have a shot uh, rather than try and make the perfect goal. And I think today kind of proved that we can manage to shoot and get the ball in the back of the net rather than walking it in. Um, and it's quite nice, obviously, seeing Sonny uh, on the wing, seeing what he can do and absolutely annihilating uh, Trippier. So, no, yeah, for me, it was a game that we, we needed to come back from. Obviously, we're all very disappointed against West Ham. Um, and we know that Newcastle aren't the easiest teams to, to go and play against. But obviously, where they've been playing so many games, as the commentators kept reminding us, um, it was nice to go out there and get the job done. Well, we just come to you. Let's get your thoughts on today's game, because let's face it, the last couple of weeks have been hard. Four defeats in five before today. So it's great. I know it was a great performance, but it was it's just great. A great feeling to get those three points again, isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive three points. I mean, it keeps us a lot closer to the top. You know, some teams are starting to get away. When you look at it, you know, seven points is not a lot. And um, we've got some tricky fixtures out of the way and and, and we just keep moving forwards. And um, yeah, brilliant result, brilliant performance. And um, to be honest, it's like it's not much different than the other games. The only difference is just the goals went in, the, the shots went in, we played better. And and I think Papa Sar de 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 deserves a mention. I think he was outstanding the kid i mean i when i was watching him i was thinking every single attack we started started from either an interception from him or some kind of block and and and, and it was brilliant and you could see the difference between him and hoiberg and um just loved it and, and the kid is amazing and it just you just think what a, we missed him a lot the last couple of games and uh and yeah just really happy to beat 
really because Newcastle are a very strong team. Yes, they have a couple of injuries as well, but you have to. You have they to have be, twelve. I know we've yeah. got a lot of injuries, but they've got twelve. So let's be honest about it. But three points is three points, and you now both exactly. teams have got a lot of injuries at the pro, uh, at the moment. So yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's you have to find a way to win, and I think Ange definitely did that. I think with the, the substitutions, putting Richarlison up top, and 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 bringing in Saar, I think the midfield was getting outrun without those two. And even Richarlison deserves a mention because he was outstanding as well. Probably his best share, his best game in a spare shirt that I've seen so far. I mean, lots of people have rolled him off, and 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 I think he's he's still he's still gonna be important for us this season. And he scored two goals today, and he's gonna have the next game, and he's gonna think I need to score again, and he's just gonna continue that form. And I'm very very happy for him because he deserves it. Obviously, coming back from an operation, and I'm sure that's not easy, and and he's frustrated, but. That's got to be massive boost to him, scoring two goals at home in front of the Spurs fans. I mean, positives all around, and 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 we, we go on to the next game. I mean, I mean, brilliant. The team looks to be gelling more and more with each game, and and yeah, it's def I'm very very happy today. Glad to hear it, Melvin. Richard, are you very very happy today? That was a, that was a decent <laughs> performance today, wasn't it? it was, yeah, you know, be, be honest, Spurs could have scored ten or more. Yeah, you look at the chances we had and um, whether it's Johnson had a couple, uh, Richarlison obviously could have had a hat-trick at least. Um, Sonny um, were cut through their defence, easy. There we go, Chris goes. Bye, Chris, see you in a minute. <laughs> um, but we, we had so many chances. And the, the good thing is that we had five-star performances all over the pitch, I believe, that Papa saw. Obviously, brilliant. Like like Melvin said, he's come back into the team like he's not missed any gameplay at all. I think there's a clear difference, like you said, Buddy, around him and Hoiberg. I think he offers some he offers more energy. Um, that the, the ball is moving so much quicker. Uh, Kuliseski again, a, a, another good uh, performance from him. And when I look back at all the games that we've played. In the last five, we've been in all of the games for sure. Our issue has been finishing, but also that because of how Ange wants to play, the players have just not been on it. And 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 today, I think everybody was in unison. There was lots of great um, great movement, and Doggy was playing as a centre forward half the time, which is brilliant. And uh, for me, it definitely was the. Uh, the, the icing on the cake for a weekend with obviously Arsenal losing as well. Hello, everybody, by the way. I've just yes, joined mate. the stream. Hello. <laughs> everybody smiling faces again. It's lovely yes. to see, isn't it? It's fantastic. Um, who, was, who was Chris Dunn? Because obviously I, I've just joined. So, so so we've been around once. Okay, so yeah. uh, I'll just give my thoughts quickly on the game. Obviously, absolutely made up that we're back to winning ways. I thought, I thought it was a... Probably the best performance of the season. Um, tailed off a little bit in that first bit of the second half, which we'll come to later, no doubt. But all in all, especially that first half, it was just a 100 mile an hour, wasn't it? And it was good. It was really good. So a lot to talk about. Let, let's get straight to that that first goal. So Holly, um, Son back on the left, uh, lovely run and cross to Adogi. So talk us through that goal. What was that all about? It was great, wasn't it? It was a madness. Um, like I say, I think I've always said I prefer Sonny uh, down the middle. Um, but now that Richardson is back and he's managing to find the back of the net, I'm all for Sonny down that wing all day long if he's going to do that every game. Um, it was just a great bit of play uh, for Sonny. Sonny was electric uh, the whole game. I think, obviously, after that uh, press conference, after the game of the West Ham one, it was kind of like he wanted to prove to everybody that Tottenham are still here. We are still going to fight for these games. And I think this Newcastle game was definitely probably evident of that. Um, and obviously for Adogi to score his first Premier League goal as well um, is just amazing. And I think the thing for me for that goal is the fact that rather than trying to find the perfect goal and walk it into the net, Adogi's first thought was, I'm going to touch his first time and it's going in the back of that goal. And I think that's what we've kind of lacked in the last previous game. So, yeah, for me, it was it was a banging uh, first goal to open the count. It's absolutely fantastic. Melvin, what, what do you make of this, the inverted fullbacks? The, the, I mean, they're inverted, but blimey, aren't they high up the pitch? I mean, it's, it's unusual because 
we're not used to this, are we? Under Conte and Mourinho, but seeing those fullbacks up, it's done about you, but I, I absolutely love it. And uh, seeing them pass to each other and setting each other up almost in the middle of the pitch in the second half, unbelievable, isn't it? It's, it's different, but it's, it's, it's working, isn't it? Yeah, both of them. I mean, Udogi and Poro are quite very, very fast, very, very strong, very good on the ball. They have, I mean, Poro, Poro has a wicket of a right foot and can really shoot, can really cross. Udogi on the other side. I was thinking before this game, actually, I mean, he's not really got any assists or goals. I was thinking before before that. I really wanted him to start contributing more because in, in the Italian league, he did contribute to more goals and assists than, than he did for us. Hopefully, it will kick on now and, and, and he'll get a couple of more. I mean, it's what we need. We need goals all over the place. It, it's But, I mean, both of them are brilliant. I mean, Pedro Poro, I mean, some people doubted that he would have fitted into our system or we could defend. And I mean, what a, what a player. And you could see it. He has so much passion for the game and he wants to win. And he goes insane with every single tackle or every single block he does. And, and Udogi is... He's only 20 years old and he's he's really, really strong and really, really fast and just perfect for the Premier League and probably one of the best young left-backs we've had for a long, long time, probably since we've had Danny Rose at the club. And um, and I, I haven't seen someone fit into a position so well since probably Kulusevski played for us a year and a half ago when he when he came came from Juventus. So, I mean, the fullbacks have been brilliant in... in the, the whole the whole team has played really really well today. I, I don't think we put a foot wrong until we conceded you know an, an unfortunate goal in the end. But 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 today I'm really really happy with the way we played. I mean we've played this most season, but this for some reason today, you know the goals just went in and and it, it maybe it's something they're doing in training. Maybe it's just repetition of these things and getting used to the system and and, and gelling. Or maybe you know it was a kick up the ass you know from 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 Postacoglu which which is something that sometimes players need and and maybe it's son because he played down the wing you know you, you don't know it's it's a combination of all these things and and may it continue hopefully you know we, we get the the next three points because we need we need to get into a run like we did earlier this season where we won four or five games in a row and and we can't drop any more silly points because we're gonna we're gonna lose a couple of players in January, and and we need to you know vo we need to pick up on these points now because because if we need if we're gonna push for that top four, we can't we can't drop any more any more like today. I mean today I was desperate for the second goal, and once we got that second goal, I was relaxed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, talk, just going back to a doggy quickly, Melvin. You watch a lot of the Italian football because obviously your fiance's. AC Milan fan, I believe. Uh, did you watch any of Udinese last year? And, and if you did, uh, was Udogi showing the the runs that, and, and the talent essentially that, that that we've seen this season, or was he playing a bit more defensive? I, I think he was playing as a wing back, wasn't he? He played as a wing back, but he was unfortunate last season because he started really well and then he got injured for a while. And when AC Milan played them, he was injured and then didn't play. So he was out for quite a bit of the season, but when he recovered and he got, you know, his full fitness and sharpness, he he contributed for a fair bit goals. I think he had combined eight eight or nine goals and assists for the season, which is which is great considering he was out for 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 the majority of, of it. But he play he played he still played quite a bit of football. But yeah, in, in the Italian league, he was he was brilliant. Plus. It's probably not as fast and, and attacking as the Premier League, but he just fits the system really, really well. And and he has the, all the attributes of, of, a, of a brilliant, brilliant fullback. He's strong and he's fast and he's very, very good on the ball and he doesn't he doesn't panic. Well, he, he did the mistake last week, but for a young, young man playing this well, this early in, in, into his Spurs career, and he and he played, he's playing for the, for the Italian National League national team now he's getting picked ahead of really 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 strong strong players as well so if he if he continues the way he's doing i'm sure he'll be playing in the euros or a massive part in the euros as well but he's a really strong strong player for us probably one of one of my favorites these young players that we've got in the last few transfer windows him Papasar. i just love the young players yeah. the energy they show and the it's like 
it's different than the other like Hoiberg and Davis. They're quite slower in, in, in the games. They slow it down, but they just they just speed and 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 and, and sprint forward. And, and I just love that in, in the players. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we've got a good one there, haven't we? Um, Richard, what, what did you make of Ben Davies today? Because I thought he was outstanding. He, he won't get many of the plaudits and Song, quite rightly, in my opinion, probably got man of the match. But I thought Davies didn't put a foot wrong today. And that that uh, incident in the first half where he actually cut out that cross, just got a toe to it around the post. The certain goal, uh, if he hadn't done that, I, I, I thought that was a brilliant piece of defending because he could have put that in his own net, couldn't he? But what have you made of Ben Davies today and and basically cut him covering for van der ven in this in this period while he's been back in the team and previous weeks really he's, he's, he's not been he's not been uh, a player that's let the team down at all i think he's uh he's he's finding his feet back at center back obviously filling in for the for van der ven etc um for me he's definitely shown why he's a good squad player um can come in and do a job um and and also was was quite reliable on the ball today as well. Um, I think one thing in his favour was obviously um, the the Newcastle attack was was lacklustre. Was obviously short of energy. Um, there wasn't a lot of one on ones until Wilson came on, um, where the forward was running in behind the centre backs. So that did help a little bit. But I thought I thought he, he played really well. Um, but when you look across the team, we didn't have a, a player that put a foot wrong, really, especially out in the first 70, 80 minutes, really showed some great intensity. Um, and the energy from the younger players really did support what the crowd wanted. They wanted that free-flowing attacking football with the end result. And um, yeah. a couple of, uh, couple of, obviously, Brandon Johnson gets the, the post a couple of times. Uh, Sonny, Richarlison, we could have been seven or eight today for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's just something that's popped into my head. I mean, I think I, like a lot of us, uh, last few weeks, it's been tough, hasn't it? Because we was up there and then we've been slipping a bit. But you've only got to look at the results over this weekend and to see, I think this, I hope it does go all the way because I think it'd be a really good end to the season to have four or five teams battling out for those Champions League spots. We actually want Manchester United, I believe, to actually continue in Europe in some guise to almost guarantee it going down to fifth place, is what I heard today. So we don't want them to crash out of Europe completely, as funny as that would be. It really does help our calls. Um, but those results this week, Richard, I mean, Arsenal losing, which, you know, we're not going to cry any tears over. United getting um, thumped. Um, Chelsea losing again. It's just a funny league, isn't it? It's, it's there for us, isn't it? This this top four or five, isn't it? But we've just got to, if we can get through, in my mind, if we can get through this Christmas, New Year period, get a few players back, hopefully, obviously we're going to lose Son, we're going to lose Sar, we're going to lose Basuma. Get a few players in early and hopefully we can kick on, yeah? For sure. And and, and also consistency is key, uh, whichever team you play and Obviously, as, as Man City fan in the first half against Luton, uh, whichever team you're playing, um, they're going to be competitive. Um, and every team's got those players that can that can turn a game, whether that's from a set piece or whether that's in play. And when I look at the Premier League, there's no like easy, easy fixtures where you can you can basically uh, play at eighty percent and expect to to win. Um, and that's that's where I think over the last five games, if you look at some of the energy levels and even I was at the City game and um, even at the City game, a couple of uh, mistakes. Obviously, they scored two goals from those mistakes. Obviously, West Ham, we had two mistakes there. Uh, and that's about concentration. Um, and that's what we need to keep. We need to keep that concentration for the whole 99, 100 minutes, whatever it is. And... Um, Keep on task as well. I think focus is a real word for, for Spurs this season. Keep focused. Um, keep delivering what the manager wants. Uh, and hopefully we can have reinforcements in January to to negate those those players that are going to play, obviously, international duty in the, in the tournaments that are going to play. And, um, and keep the levels that we have kept up in some of the games. Uh, yes, we're going to give, obviously, the opposition 
the odd opportunity to to hit us on the break or um, especially th th those counter attacking moves. But I feel confident with the the weapons that we've got, and then maybe adding to those that we can be uh, competitive for that top four, if not top five, at the end of the season. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Holly, just coming over to you. Let, let, let's go on to the second goal and another another big involvement from Hing Min Son and Richie got his goal, his first with his foot for Tottenham, I believe. Um, what do you make of Hing Min Son on the left? I touched on it earlier, but for me, I, I think he looks so comfortable on that left wing. He gets on the ball more. And if we can have a centre forward, if, well, let's take Richarlison, for example. I've never had that much faith in him, if I'm honest. I want him to work. Of course I do. But if Richarlison, I think Richard, we could do with another striker to push Richarlison, right? Uh, I don't think Belize is quite ready yet. But if we do get a, a centre forward in the window, I wouldn't be, uh, I'll be very pleased with that. So what about you? Do you feel that? Sonny's best position is on the left. We know he can do a job through the middle as well. But for me, just seeing him on the left makes me realise what we've what we've missed with Harry not being there, obviously. Yeah, definitely. And I think the thing is, because we didn't have anybody firing up the top since, obviously, Harry sadly left, it's kind of like that was the best position to Son to play for us to start scoring goals. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I thought at the start of the season that he maybe lost a bit of confidence to taking a, a man on. Um, but I think maybe in playing down the middle and now slotting back out to the wing has given that confidence again of, I can be a man. I mean, we saw it today, obviously, with that second goal, we absolutely skinned trips and then managed to pass it back to find Richie uh, on his foot. So I think it's true. I think if Richarlison can keep his confidence, now he's got two under his belt at home. Um, I would definitely prefer to see Sonny on that wing because I think Sonny can do that one touch pass around the corner. I know Richie did it a few times in that position, but I don't think it was probably the best. I think Sonny's just got it like that. He knows how to how to do that, whereas Richie takes a bit of time to find that pass um, in behind. Um, so, yeah, for me, Sonny on that wing. If Richardson can keep firing, so be it. Um, like you said with Veliz, I think with Pedro Porro's crossing, I think it suits Richardson and, and Veliz very well. I know there's a few times in the game where I think there was a chance where Richie didn't know whether to kick it with his foot or header it. Um, and if he kind of adapts that kind of his game and works out what part of his body he's going to use, I think we've got a good threat with Richie and potentially Veliz. But you're right. I think January is the perfect time to get someone in that can potentially as well find the back of the net. Because like we've all said, I don't think Sonny's that out and out striker, but we know he can do a job. If we can find someone that's natural position, as well as Richie, mm. to push Richie on, I think that would be the perfect combo. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you you saying that about Rich Allison there, he kind of leads on to the dance he has. And he, for me, he should have just gone with his head initially, but he kind of got himself in, tied himself up in knots, didn't he? It was a bit of a funny one, that, because it was just a tapping, wasn't it? Um, mm. But overall, I thought I thought Rich Allison was pretty good today. Did What do you think, Holly? Do you think, what would you give him out of 10, Rich Allison, today? I think just because of how down about himself has been and the fact that he hasn't been able to fire. I mean, last week, obviously, missing the post with that header by, like, margins. And you're thinking, my word, that's that's a sitter, pretty much. And today to come out and bounce back and be like, no, I'm going to score two goals. I mean, even if he stayed on, he could have maybe taken that penalty to get his hat-trick. I don't know whether someone would have let him. But still, it's kind of like this is something he needs. I think he's very much a confidence player. Um, but no, I think out of 10, I'd maybe give him, I'd give him an 8. I think just because of how low and how poor he has been, the fact that he's got that resilience to bounce back today and manage finding that. I just hope that he carries on, basically. Yeah, to totally. He, he's, he, look, I, I'm not his biggest... Oh, I say I'm not his biggest fan. That, that'd be harsh to say that. That, that. That's not what I mean. But, do you, do you know, I, I want to see more from him, is yeah, what I'm he's saying. He's very frustrating. Look, <laughs> he, he is. He's incredibly frustrating. I want to see the Brazilian Richarlison the one we saw at the World Cup, and then I'll be more than happy. But, you know, um, let's hope he can come good over the Christmas period. And certainly we're going to need somebody, aren't we, in January when Sonny goes off to the Asian Asian Cup. But, you know, because he could be out for, for four games, five games perhaps. So, yeah, let, let, let's hope Richie comes good. Melvin, Melvin, what did you make of Pedro Porro today? I've got to ask because I, there's a couple in the comments there that saying big shout out to Pedro Porro. I thought, he was brilliant today. There wasn't a many players the energy, the crossing, tenacity. I thought he was fantastic, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. And even Kulisevsky, I think, not being um, in a way, in his way, because it, Brendan Johnson was there. I think the link-up play between the two was a bit better because Johnson was more more involved. You know, he nearly scored twice. He was 
brilliant of a shot you know came off the the post or the bar i don't know which which angle he shot i i, I swore that was in i don't know how mm. that i did not go in but i i was screaming i was like go oh, yeah it, it was an in but it was insane but yeah pedro por has been brilliant for us this season and um i think his his, his He's, he has a real engine, him and, and Yudogi, that can both of them go up and down the pitch. They can link up well. And, um, and yeah, and with Rich, like you said before, with Richarlison on the pitch, it's just another weapon to his arsenal. He can cross it in and try to find him. I think with Son as, 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 as a centre forward, I don't think I think we lack that, that ability. We can't just whip it in first time or cross it high. I think Richarlison offers more of a physical dominance in, in in the box something which we lacked this season and, and pedro poro you know he scored late against liverpool but i really wanted him to want to keep the clean sheet for the for the defense because i thought that was important for us to be able to keep a clean sheet for i think vicario was going crazy at the end of the match because 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 we can see it really really late mm. in a poor goal but yeah it's his passing is brilliant. He rarely puts a foot wrong. And, and, and when he does, he really recovers well. I mean, he was out of position for that Andy Gordon chance that, that he whipped in. And and we got caught early on. And I thought, oh, they might target Pedro Porro because they know he, he attacks quite a bit. But, I mean, we were we were brilliant. We were ready for all of that. And, and Bissouma and Saar, I think, covered a lot of ground today. And, and, and which... which which then gives license to, to these players, the fullbacks, to, to push on and, and 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 attack and join and join the attack, which is why we scored today. So 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 brilliant from Pedro Poro. I think I think he's set, settling in well, and he's, he's been a, nearly a year now because he joined in January. So that's why yeah. why I really like when we buy players in January because they have that six month period to settle. And then they have a preseason with the club and they know what the coach wants. And then all of a sudden, they really start to kick on in the beginning of the season. And Pedro Porro has been brilliant. And, and he kept Emerson Royal out of the starting lineup ever since, you know, Brentford. He's not, he's not been dropped since then. And, 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 and Emerson was playing well at the end of last season. So, you know, really, really good job. And, and, and I hope he chips in more with the goals and assists as well. I'd love to see him score a goal, you know, from a really good shot outside the box, because he has that in, in his arsenal. You know, he's got a really, really strong right foot, and he and he really tries to, you know, he tries to whip it in in a dangerous area. And like Liverpool, it came off, but sometimes it just doesn't. But I think with time and and, and the more the team gels, we'll know, we'll know, you know, which areas we can inflict damage. And and Pedro Por is definitely one of those players who can. Who can hurt hurt the team as well as Johnson? And I really liked them combining on the right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good point, actually, Richard. Just come over to you about that. Do you think Brendan Johnson um, on the right is going to be better than Brendan Johnson on the left? Because for me, he, he's better on the right. He says it, that's his position. I think they could strike up a pretty good partnership. Um, bearing in mind, of course. That, Kulis, that kind of pushes Kulishevsky somewhere else. Now, Kulishevsky, I thought, played really well as a number 10. He says it's his favourite position. Um, so, bearing in mind that kind of triangle, what, what do you like? Did you see Brennan Johnson, if we get another striker in, do you see Brennan Johnson be in that right-wing position or in battling with Kulishevsky or Kulishevsky battling with Madison? Or what do you, what do you, how do you feel that? Because I thought, I thought both have, have equal claims for that position actually yeah yeah and also you need that competition that healthy competition but um it's all about partnerships within teams as well like melvin said obviously Paolo johnson um i think um over the last five games as well with with sonny kind of drift drifting into that that striker position we definitely lost that physical presence in the air um and and that's something that we need to look at in the january market um to have somebody else that's uh, strong in that area because obviously harry harry definitely gave us that um and i think johnson's a, a player that likes to get on the ball and whip that ball in um and i think there has been instances where i've said kind of whip that ball in and he's kind of been a little bit reluctant and he's like cut back or been dispossessed because obviously there's been nobody in the box for him to to try and find 
yeah, obviously he's got bundles of talent, energy, um, and obviously again follows the the Ange kind of philosophy around the press as well, which is really important. But um, I'm a massive fan of Porro. Um, I think again he's, he's he's passionate about playing for the team. He wants to give it his all. You can see how much he gives for the team, and if you've got somebody in front of him that then allows him to push on. So to overlap, I think that's really important uh, in, in that role that he can kind of push push in because in doggy favours actually coming inside then get then, yeah. then pushing pushing down which which is quite interesting. Um and then Poro obviously the opposite he, he prefers to kind of overlap the winger and then cut inside and amazing ball like the the ball for Richarlison's uh, second was like fantastic, um, and I thought it got away from him. Obviously, at first with that first touch, you can't. But um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, and that's the vision that he's got. I think that's obviously as a young player, that vision can only get better. Um, but as soon as our Definitely. obviously players get back into the team that are injured, I think we've got lots of options. And then obviously January when we uh, hopefully um, buy in some new recruits. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's funny. Just going back to Kulishevsky there. Um, it's good, isn't it? Because you think Lo is going to come in and play in that number 10 role, but it just goes to prove that whether Lo Celso's carrying an injury or whether Ange just didn't fancy him to start two games in quick succession, I don't know. But Kulisevsky, I thought, was really good today in that number Absolutely. 10 role. He was everywhere. Um, but Lo Celso as well, when we do lose those players, Lo Celso can play anywhere across that front three himself. Yeah, so we've true. got that op- option to do that. Um, I think Kulisevsky though brings more energy. That's the reason why he's he like, does. He's, 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 he does. he's on the he's in the first eleven. Obviously, he's, he's talent on the ball. He's, he's obviously a strong lad, uh, yeah. but also yeah. the energy he brings. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we're uh, almost at the end of that first half. But what what did you make of that first half as a whole? Were you did you have a smile on your face as much as I did that first half because it was just outstanding, wasn't it? It was. It was like liquid football. It was very nice. Um, and the thing is, it, like I keep saying, the thing is that we were actually clinical. I know there's a lot of chances obviously didn't go in the back of the net, uh, but the fact that we obviously managed to get two in, I was very pleased. Um, but I always had that thing in the back of my head of, we need to make sure we score early in the second half because I can see how this story's going once again. But no, first half was cracking. Everybody put a shift in. Um, and I just, yeah, it, it's just so exciting. And I think all Spurs fans are the same, that we're actually enjoying watching Spurs again. And I think that was one of the the most, one of the, my top things this season of, I just want to enjoy watching Tottenham again, because it's been so long where we've watched Conte ball, we've watched Jose ball, and Ange was just a breath of fresh air. And that highlighted that in, in that first half. And then obviously after the first 15 minutes, highlighted it again, obviously in the second half. So yeah, I was more than pleased uh, with our performance. Uh, absolutely and you know it's funny you say that that enjoy watching Tottenham that's so key because last season both my sons uh at the start were watching and then one of them didn't really show much interest in watching and even by the end the other one didn't want to watch the games either and to be honest I didn't want to watch them but I had to um but now they're both right, right back into it. and I think I think that's so important you can see you try and get a ticket for the game any home game at the moment and it's very very difficult even if you remember and i know i i very much struggled to get us four tickets for all four of us to go and that just goes to show the Ange effect doesn't it and you want to watch good football and you you want to watch tottenham play the way we all want to watch them play and that first half kind of summed everything up didn't it for people asking chris is going to be on his way back he's just had to jump off and do something that's why you got to listen to me running it until he steps back in so he'll be back soon um melvin what happened at the start of that second half what happened we were so slow again wasn't it it was back foot again for a little while i did worry i must admit like holly there yeah i think i think that's why you know papa sar and, and kolozevsky in the middle made such a difference because they're both really really fast strong they can win the ball they have legs they can run for days all three of them and I think that's the difference between having Hoiberg in that position than than having Papasar and, and Kulusevski. I think even G- Gio being dropped, I don't think he's done anything wrong. But I just think playing playing Newcastle, playing Joe Linton and, and Bruno Gimeres, who are absolutely brilliant midfielders, really really strong. And we matched them man for man, and and they were strong. And and we just we just bullied them. 
uh, simple as that. We pressed them in the middle and didn't give them time on the ball. And uh, I just saw Gary's comment. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Gary's happy. <laughs> yeah, of course, Gary's happy. Gary's day is made when Arsenal lose and Spurs win. <laughs> well, most Spurs yeah, fans. Uh, yeah. That, that, that describes most Spurs fans, but yeah, especially Gary. Um, yeah, I was saying, I think that's the main difference today. I was thinking, what's so different? Because we still play this kind of football all season. But I think, I think the main difference is Kulisevsky might be better suited playing in that role, I think, for the entire for the entire season. Because he's still effective in that role. He still runs a lot. And, and Johnson is more of a one-on-one -on -one speed. He can beat a player. He can shoot. He can link up. And and I think he does better on the right than Kulisevsky. I think versus West Ham, we destroyed them in the first half. But I think Kulisevsky, in a way, slowed down the attack sometimes. And then we have to bring it back. And we had none of that today. It was straight to the goal, straight to the goal, straight straight to Son, straight to Richarlison, straight to Johnson. And it was always direct. And, and the play didn't stop once. And I think Kulisevsky playing further back that kind of, you know, Ericsson role, if you want to say. I think he's more suited to that because his decision-making is very well. He can win the ball further back the pitch and he's got legs to run forward with it and, 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 and bully players off the ball. And I think over time we might see him drop back because we're going to lose Saar and Bissouma in January anyway. So, so he might be more suited in that position. And I think that's going to be, barring any injuries, I think that's going to be his position for a while now. I don't think he's going to move further forwards. Don't, I think there's a lot of versatility in the squad. I mean, Richarlison can play, you know, left, centre, right. Son can play right, centre. I think Ange will probably keep them on their toes. Even the opposition change change it from game to game. I don't think Newcastle expected this lineup either. I think that was a shock to most people. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe they guessed one or two but i i don't i don't think everyone expected this i think they expected geo to play maybe hoiberg but but yeah i didn't i didn't expect rich Allison to start and 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 and, and papasar either but but yeah it's i think going forward this might be our best suited position uh, posi position for these players and, and 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 formation and everything and what do, what what did you think craig I, 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 I just thought, to be honest, that as, as a team today, I can't really single out any 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 particular person. I know we've touched on certain players, but I just thought as a team today, I just thought everybody was fantastic. I, I, even the subs that come on, um, it, it, it just looked like we were gelling again. And, and that, that's the thing for me. It's the key. You, you can say somebody's had an outstanding performance. We've, we've seen... Uh, Harry Kane carry us in games before and Harry's one man of the match after man of the match. And But today, you could have almost given it to a lot of the players on the pitch. And for me, that just speaks volumes. I, I personally, the midfield I'd like to see eventually, and I think Ange kind of hinted at this, is Bissouma, Benton Kerr and Madison in the three. Now, that that, that would be fierce. And we and which seems harsh on Saar because I thought Saar was absolutely outstanding himself today. Um, but Sars, we're going to be losing Sars obviously in, 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 in January. And for me, at the moment, it looks like Hoybier is going to be coming into that role. But, you know, if we can get somebody else in, we'll um, we'll see. But Richard, think, let's come on. Yeah, I think Sars so, so yeah. in the team. I think, I think Sars one of our one of our best players in the midfield. I think, he's, I think, fantastic, uh, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. Yeah. So um, going back to obviously Melvin's point about Kulu, I think um, if you look at the amount of touches he's had in other games compared with today, vast amount more touches, more influential, um, bringing the ball up from that in that final third of the pitch. Um, yeah, he's. I would I would want to see him more in that number ten position now, uh, just because. Like I say, he's he's strong enough, I believe, to be able to bring that ball out as well as he's got a pass in him. Uh, so, mm. yeah, big shout out to him today because he was an excellent, excellent game for sure.
I, th I think Sar actually brings out the best in Bissouma as well. They seem to play yeah. well together for some reason. It's, sure. it's funny, isn't it? Those little interchanges. They, he just seemed very comfortable with him alongside it's, him. It's those partnerships, um, isn't it? Like I said, a, a lot of the pitch, you've, got, you've got those. And in, in the midfield, obviously, you're looking for that triangle at some, some point. And then, obviously, your you're two wide wide players on either side. It they, when those partnerships work, they can interchange as well. It's it, it really confuses the opposition team for sure. It does and, and you know, dare I say it, the fixtures now are on paper anyway, a little bit little more kinder um than over the last few weeks. But you know, Everton are playing well. Um and we've got them a couple of weeks Form before team. Christmas. Form yeah. team, you know, yeah, absolutely. If you know with that ten if that ten point deduction wasn't there they'd I think they'd have been well up the table. I can't remember somebody told me they they would be above, but they're, they're um, 23rd, well up 23 there. Twenty three points now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute form team. So, so yeah, not not to be um, taken lightly. Absolutely. But Richard, to stay with you, talk us through Richie's goal, his second goal, and that pass from Poro. It was absolute yeah. mustard, wasn't it? I think obviously with what you get from Richie is. Especially in, in, in the game today, a lot of effort around winning down balls, had a lot of opportunity to, to break free from. The centre backs looked a bit fragile today uh, from Newcastle. And uh, as a commentator was, was, was saying, looked like they picked up a couple of knocks. So the movement was very poor. And I think uh, Pedro had obviously identified that, identified the space in between the two centre backs. And Richie was literally right in the middle of them in that space. Brilliant um, cross stroke Hollywood pass to, to Richie and um, took it down, like I said earlier. I thought he'd kind of let it go a little bit too far in front of him, but it yeah. felt nicely for him just to stroke it underneath uh, Debraca. So it was, uh, it was nice to see um, that obviously. Just getting the one goal is great for Richie and his confidence. But getting getting a brace in a game, he's going to take that uh, uh, forwards. And I, I think I think for me as well, those opportunities that Richie does get, when they are kind of, he's not got to think about it. He's more, I, I've got more confidence that he's going to put it away. It's when he's got a little bit of time, maybe he's got two or three touches, uh, he's got to pick his spot, mm. and then I'm not that confident he's going to actually finish. So... Um, yeah, great for Richie, actually. You can take that moving forwards into the other games and uh, hopefully you can go on a little bit of a run. And again, like I said before, momentum is really key with, with these results. Obviously, Newcastle at home, it's a big team as well. It's a, one of those teams that obviously have, over the last couple of seasons have really stepped it up with the, the signings they've made, but also the progress, obviously, Champions League, etc. Uh, I think for me, it's, uh, it's a great scout. Uh, a lot of the players can can um, can build off this and build into the next two or three games and 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 go back into a run. So get a run of five six games, uh, winning streak. That'd be great to take that in. Obviously into the into the new year. Absolutely. And just looking in the comments, people. Gary asked who was the man of the match. It was Son, but quite rightly, people are saying Saul man of the match. It's like I say. I thought they were all outstanding. It was five and six, of, really. uh, absolutely. And. and and Davies for me, you know, he's he does get a bit of stick, but I thought he was sensational today, as I've said, as I said earlier. Holly, what did you make of the front three when it came out? Actually, just going kind of back to the team lineup, but what, were you expecting Richarlison to start, or were you happy with that front three? I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a bit, I was a bit taken back to see his name, uh, obviously on the team sheet, but then obviously I was a bit more happy that Hoiberg uh, was was left off it. Um, bless him. He is a great, obviously, Viking, as we as we all call him and love him, but he just hasn't been up to the mark. So to see Richardson put in kind of instead or over Hoiberg, I, I think for me was definitely better, um, and especially, obviously, that proved to be. Um, but it was just very exciting to see Sonny again, obviously, on that wing. Um, again, that was something I wasn't quite expecting. If I saw Richardson, I was maybe expecting him to see him on the wing, like we have seen in previous games. Um, so I, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, to be fair. The fact that, I know we've spoken about already, but with that, we're seeing these partnerships now being made across the park so to speak through to our front three I think the way we're playing football through obviously the, the final third is amazing it's just obviously trying to be a bit more clinical which today we obviously didn't lack because we obviously managed to score four but in previous games that's been the, the missing ingredient so to speak so yeah for me to so the fact that 
we can still mix it up and, and play Richardson through the middle and, and talk about that momentum. If you can keep that up, I'd thoroughly yeah. enjoy seeing that front kind of combination more often. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's funny though, isn't it? Because the players we've got out, the attacking players, Perisic, who we all thought was perhaps going to be leaving even in the summer, I think he's been a miss because of his delivery and when he's mm -hmm. come on on that left wing position, he can cross with either foot. I still actually don't know what is his stronger foot, Perisic, because he's taken corners with his left hand, his right. I mean, that, that you don't see that very often, do you? Um, and Solomon, of course, we've, we've been missing. We've, people tend to forget him. And we've 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 got strength in those positions, haven't we? Um, you know, even with Brian Gill coming on today, admittedly, I don't think Brian Gill's sadly going to cut it at Tottenham. I think, as I said on the stream last one I was on, I think some players aren't made for the Premier League and just will not make it. But I think he could do very well in Spain. I think there's a player in there. What what do you make of Brian Gill? What would you do in the transfer window? I know we'll come on to it later, Holly. But what do you think in in January? Do you think he's do you think we should take accept an offer for Brian Gill if one comes in or let him go on loan somewhere? I don't know. It's really difficult because right now we're sitting in quite a good position because we've got all these players to play around with in midfield and attack. Um, but as we've seen before, if we lose one of those key players, it can be a little bit difficult. I'm not saying that is, is Bayern Hill up to the scratch of the Premier League. I'm not too sure. He just seems a little bit too lightweight. But there is definitely a player in there. And is that something that we can kind of build with Bayern Hill? I, I, I don't know. But um, it's really difficult. If it means we let him go... Um, or loan to, to build himself up again and, and to get him necessarily off the wage bracket so somebody else can can come in. I'm there for it because we all know that we kind of need that striker. Um, but it's just really difficult because I feel we're still like a couple of injuries away from absolutely falling off a, a cliff again. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, there's there's maybe a player in front of a who I'd say I'd rather than see next in, in terms of Hoiberg. I mean, there's rumours he could be potentially leaving in January. I think for me, maybe I'd see him, uh, after the last couple of performances from him, I'd maybe see him go out the door, considering who else we've got in that position at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be sitting on the fence for this one and say, who knows what happens in January with Bayern Hill. Yeah, absolutely. Melvin, um, Brendan Johnson um, had a fantastic effort, rattle off the bar, didn't he? I thought that was in all the way. It just curled and hit the bar. What do you make of Johnson's performance and particularly that chance today? He's he's rapid, Johnson. I mean, I've I've a real soft spot for players who are really, really fast, like Adel Lennon used to be, Gareth Bale, you know, those kind of players that just just with sheer pace go past players and, and, and just do cra crazy things. And I just he's that type of player and he's and he's really, really young. And I it's it's unfortunate he didn't score today because I think he needed a goal just as well as Richarlison did. But I think playing 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 a solid ninety minutes and, and playing so well, I think that will do really really good things for him. I think it's the first game he started that we we've won so far this season. I think I think I heard that during the during the West Ham game. We haven't won a game with him with him starting yet, which is good. So yeah, I think him on the right with Pedro Porro linking up with with Steven, with Son and and Richarlison, I think they were dangerous. And and he's he doesn't slow down the attack like Kolesevsky does on that side. So it's unfortunate he didn't score, but but I think he he will chip in with goals throughout the season. I think he will probably end up with he'll do well to end up with close to eight or nine goals this season. But I think he will if he keeps playing the way he is and. And the the Postogoglu system gets more embedded and more gelled within the team. I think he he will definitely start to chip in with more more goals, which is something yeah. that we need. We need the goals to be spread, especially in January when we lose when we lose a couple of couple of players. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. We're up to Chris is back, everyone. So uh, we're up to uh, Brendan Johnson rattling the bar. So if you're ready to. Take the reins back over. I'll hand back over to Chris and say, bid everybody farewell and happy Spurs Day. Lovely to get a win. And I'll see you on the next stream soon. Thank you so much, Craig. See you soon. No worries. See you later. Bye. Holly, let's come round to you. So we're up to the 63rd minute, of course. Uh, in that same minute, Hun Min Son uh, with another opportunity. Um, just why? And I've written in my notes here, that is when the stadium really got rocking. That is when the stadium started to get extremely excited by that point because of course 
it has been a difficult couple of weeks. Although we've played well in some of these games, the results haven't been there because before today, of course, four defeats in our last five. Uh, of course, we've got that one point against Manchester City, but um, that atmosphere was back today. The smiles were back on people's faces. And, you know, I keep saying it, only three points away from top four. We're nearly halfway in, you know, of this league season and only seven points away from top spot. Most fans would have taken that, wouldn't they, in the summer when Harry Kane left? Definitely. I think the fact that obviously with him leaving and obviously Ange coming in and breathing this new breath of fresh air is just incredible to see that we're not very far off the top, even this far into the season. It's just that it's been an amazing turnaround. And I said at the start of the season, I just want to enjoy watching Tottenham again. And I think we've gone above and beyond that at the moment in that kind of sense. I feel like we're actually, I know obviously it's been a rough couple of weeks, but I've still enjoyed watching us. It's been yeah. very frustrating but I've still enjoyed it. And, and obviously today, to play the way we did, everybody firing on all cylinders and to come away with three points at home, like you said, to see everybody rocking in the stadium, it, I think it's something we've needed and it will hopefully push us on, obviously, through to the next couple of fixtures over the Christmas break. Absolutely. It's a very busy December. Rich, let's come to you. Um, as I mentioned, the stadium is rocking at that point. Uh, Pedro Poro uh, with uh, a chance that he put over the bar in, in 66 minutes. How good was Pedro Poro today and how good has he been this season? Because, of course, he had a, a bit of a rocky start, it's fair to say. His debut against Leicester City last season when we bought him. Um, you know, Tim Sherwood, ex-player and manager, came out and said that he was very naive, uh, thought he was a terrible defender. But this season, I think Pedro Poro has been one of our standout players, hasn't he? Yeah, for sure. Melvin mentioned it earlier about, obviously, the delivery and how good that was. I think his energy, the passion that he shows for the team, it's infectious. Obviously, that's what Angie's wanting. He's wanting uh, leaders within every position. Um, and obviously, last season, one of the things that I was very critical about the Spurs team was the lack of leaders within the team. And uh, it was evident that, obviously, when he gets on the ball, he's positive with that movement as well. He's really positive. And um, that's what we love. We love somebody on the ball that's going to push forward and really press the opposing team. He's obviously, he's got a couple of tricks as well. He's not scared to uh, show them. Um, confidence has grown. I think obviously when he first came into the team, obviously last season, it was, he didn't really know his position and what, 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 what influence he would have on the team. But also, I think when he came into the team, like Tim Sherwood did say, naivety in lots of different positions giving the ball away in silly positions was something they did this season he's cut those um mistakes out but also been a player that's been willing to bust the gut to get back to support the team if anybody else gives the ball away melvin let's come to you um let's talk a little bit about hunmin son i don't know whether you've covered hunmin son already but if you have then let's do it again because uh, i think that his performance today was absolutely exceptional. Um, a couple of assists today uh, and, of course, a goal from the penalty spot, our first penalty of the season in the Premier League. Um, what do you think of Hunmin Son today? Uh, you know, showed real leadership today, didn't he? Yeah, he, he's been brilliant all season. And um, I, I didn't think he was going to start the game. I thought he was injured. I wasn't sure. But I'm really happy that he played. And I'm really happy that Postacoglu changed it up a bit and he put him in his, uh, obviously in his more natural position on, on the left and uh, he just fitted in and, and, and he seemed really, really sharp and really, really direct and his link-up play was really good and great to see him score because you just love it when you see score, Sonny score, him smiling in the stadium, everyone going absolutely crazy. It's just, it's what you want to see. Yeah. It's it's great and, and, and uh, yeah, Happy captain, you know. When you, I don't think anyone hates Son or anyone dislikes Son. He's probably the most likable player in the Premier League. Son, and it's just he's brilliant. And um, yeah, what more can you say about Son? I mean, scoring the penalty. I, I've I don't think I've ever seen him take a penalty kick, and I was curious to see what he was going to do with, with the shot. And, and to be fair, it was a brilliant penalty. It was something Kane would have been proud of, you know, to see him score like that. When I saw Rocket in, in, in the left-hand side, I thought, yeah, Son knows how to take a freak, a penalty kick. I'm not, not going to worry anymore because I was curious to see, one, who was going to take it because I, I wasn't sure who was our main penalty taker. 
because all season we've not had a single penalty, like you just mentioned. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's just it's been brilliant. And I think Richarlison, the link up play between the front four, if you can say, was really good today. And and they all linked up really, really well. Even with the assist to your doggy and 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 everything. He's just I think he knows when with experience on, I think earlier in the season or even the last few seasons, he wants to score. When he got the golden boot, it was all about him scoring, scoring, scoring. Now it might be more, you know, son the provider from the left hand side. It could be he knows he knows when he's he has an eye for goal and he has an eye for an assist. And and today he managed to do both. It, you know, a couple more games like this, and yeah, just it's just what we need. It's what we need. He's he's cl he's class one, and half a chance, and he's gonna score it. It's just it's the difference between between world class players and 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 an average player. But Son gets half a chance, and with his technique, and it's so dialed in. It's just the muscle memory, and it's just he's gonna score them every single time. I I spoke to Sonny on the pitch before the Man City game. And I said to Sonny, get us a brace today. <laughs> and he did, but one in, one in, obviously the wrong net. <laughs> I was like, don't say that again, Rich. What a plonker. <laughs> yeah, don't say that again, Rich. <laughs> Oli, let's come to you. Um, Kulisewski had a shot on goal with goalkeeper saved in the 67th minute. Uh, what do you make of Kulisewski today? Of course, he was wearing that protective mask because uh, he broke his nose in the last couple of minutes of the West Ham game. Uh, what do you make of um, Kulisewski today? I think he's been great. I think I think everybody was great today. And I know we've all kind of spoken about it. There's there's not really one player that we could pick out and say they've had a bad game. Everybody was brilliant. Um, Decky especially. Um, I think he gets a lot of sticks sometimes and, and people say he's not quick enough. He's not this, he's not that. But my word, the man has an absolute engine within him and his physicality is next to none. And I think he's now starting to obviously make the right decisions. Um, and I think partnerships across the park down that side is just excellent. Um, so for me, I think Decky just keeps doing what he's doing. I think we're seeing him in a great position, obviously, when he floats inside. Um, I think he said that that's where he likes to play. Obviously, he's great on the wing, but we utilise him more in the middle. And it's going to come a bit of a, a battle, I think, when Madison comes back in terms of who's going to potentially get that that middle role, especially where Decky's been playing so well. But as we know, Madison is different gravy. So I'm sure Madison will come straight back in. But yeah, Decky for me is been doing brilliantly in the last couple of games. Holly, let's stay with you. What did you make of Christian Romero's um, yellow card? It just seemed that he was a very lucky boy. Do you think? Do you think he's learnt his lesson, having been suspended for those games when we desperately needed him? Do you think he's going to tone it down a little bit, or do you think that that is just Christian Romero? That is that is the way he plays. I think after today, yes. I don't think he's going to manage to iron it out. Um, I was thinking you are a very, very lucky boy. I think if that was on any other occasion, I think he'd be seeing red there. Uh, I don't know why he's done it. There's no need to do it. He's just seen red as per usual and absolutely kebabbed uh, the player. It's just when we're 3-0 up, we just don't need to do it there. Um, I don't know what's running through his head, but like I say, I think it's just in his nature. That's just how he is. Um, and it's just situations like that that I think is going to cost us again. We know how good he is at the back. And when we lost him, I, I don't want to see Emerson Royale and Davies Blesson playing together at the back again. Um, and if Romero is going to keep doing these rash challenges, that could potentially become a thing. And I don't want it to become a thing. So somehow ange has got to try and iron out of him, but I, I have no idea how. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that uh, scenario was because of the um, situation between Wilson and Beccario. There's a little bit of a ding dong, and then um, Romero, Romero just kind of got in between them, and you can see that look in his eye going, "If I get a chance, I'm going to go through you." Because Wilson's a bit of a crybaby as well. He's like, he likes to like, if if he gets a VAR decision, he likes to kind of go, "Well, you win some and you lose some, and we've won it today." And obviously, Newcastle got dicked, and then he's has a bit of a cry. So. Um, for for me, it's yeah. Obviously, he shouldn't have done it, but I think he was just wanting to put him back in his place and go, look, look at the scoreboard, and uh, shut your mouth, kind of thing. Rich, when you were at that Manchester City game, yes, you had. Did you get the chance to speak to any other Spurs players? No, just Sonny. No, so um, I didn't. I was I was trying to wait around at the end and speak to the guys after. 
um, lucky enough with the partnership with One City and, and Nissan that was able to be on the pitch at uh, the start for the captain's yeah. handshake and then at half time promoting um, diversity and inclusion in, in, in football, which was awesome. But yeah, to see to see the uh, the players that close, and also to watch them in their preparation was yeah was mind blowing really, and had a good feeling that maybe the tide was going to turn at that game, and obviously it's the fruits of that game have really rolled on into this one for sure. Rich, let's stay with you because Ange Postecoglou made five subs today. Um, Hoybier and Lacelso, of course, dropped out of the team for Sarah and Richarlison. They came on in the seventy third minute. Um, Skip, of course, came on. Brian Hill came on. And Jamie Donnelly making his uh, home debut uh, for Tottenham Hotspur today. Um, out of the squad players that, you know, the players that don't really get that much game time, who would you say so far this season has really taken their opportunity and perhaps surprised you? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I think there's obviously a clear Ladies difference with all bar- yeah, well, difference with some of the players for sure. Um, obviously, we spoke about this a little bit earlier around how slow Hoiberg is on the ball, and and, and compared with Papasar and uh, Bensuma and um, Benzinka, and having those players in those those positions that are able to not take that touch and, and make the ball kind of move for you uh, has, has been really important in the games that we've we've obviously won. I think the Celso kind of it's been a bit of a regeneration from him. Obviously, he's he's come in, and I think it, it doesn't last the whole ninety minutes for sure. Um, I think his impact and energy levels are probably fifty or sixty minutes. Um, but apart from that, I, I still think um, those players that come on, there is a clear difference between that that starting eleven and what we've got on the bench. That's why we need recruits, especially when. Some of the players go out for international duty in January. Uh, our problem is that if you you saw that when the substitutes did come on, not initially, but maybe five or six minutes later, especially when we had quite a few changes, how that intensity massively dro- dropped and then we were open. There was four or five minutes where Newcastle had three or four chances where you thought they could score every time they go forwards. And I, I think that's something that we need to we need to be focus for that 99 100 minutes and we need to be prepared for potentially that onslaught because so, some teams are really strong on that 90 minute plus that could easily bag one or two goals so i think that's something where we need to really really work on melvin let's come to you now before today's game of course we lost four out of five premier league matches um i can't quite believe that i have seen so much negativity about and postacoglu what do you say to those fans? Because I know you're fully on board, the same as I am, with this and ball. And I think that and ball will only get better through time. You know, more transfer windows. As weeks go on, I feel like he changes things for the better. Um, what do you say to the, the, the people questioning Andrew's style, his setup, and the way that he does things? Um, let me remind you of the early days of Pochettino. Because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We saw glimpses of it and then it came through later in the season. And to be fair, if we didn't get the injuries around the Chelsea game, I'm sure we discussed this and most Spurs fans said this, but if we didn't get the injuries to Van der Ver and then medicine and, and in the last... But... Postokoglu, what he's managed to do. Can you hear me okay? You're a bit in and out, Melvin, but I am going to say that I, I, hope, I hope you don't mind me saying this as well. When we were sitting top of the Premier League after 10 unbeaten, you did say to me, Chris, we're going to win the Premier League. And I said, no, calm down. Calm down, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely convinced that we were going to win the Premier League. I was absolutely convinced. And I was telling my brother, I was telling my girlfriend every day, I'm like, I, th- I think we're going to win it. I think we're going to do a Leicester and win it. But yeah, 
but I've seen I've seen enough in the manager and the way we've played and the way this set it up. I think it will get better and better over time. And we saw today the way we played. I think the manager's quite he's I think he's very, very smart. I think he can spot a player from a mile away. And 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 he knows his system. And and, and look at Brendan Johnson. I mean, I saw him play for for Nottingham Forest, and I would never have chosen him to sign him in a million years, probably. But he picked him out and he said, listen, I want him. And the same with Vicario, same with Van de Ven. The man, the man knows what he's doing. And and I'm pretty sure if, we, if we're patient, I know we've been patient for so long. We've been patient for so long. But I think this is the final hurdle, hopefully. <laughs> but if we have a couple transfer windows and we stay... And with some luck, because you need luck in football. You just look at the Liverpool match. I mean, we were lucky that game. And you need some luck in football and some things to go your way. But I think Postokoglu is definitely the guy. I mean, I mean the, the fan the fan base. Remember last season? I remember last season being embarrassed of spares and not want... I wasn't excited. I, I didn't see the press conferences. And I was... I was watching them and I was half watching them. I was like waiting for us to concede. I was waiting us to have a shot. And and, and, and then we had the whole Kane saga. And, and I just think next summer or even, even this season, this season is still right in front of us and it's not even ready. But I'm so excited for this project because I think I know where it's going to go. And once we get the players that we've lost through injury and, 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 and all of this back fit, and we have a lot of... I'm not going to say dead wood because it's offensive to the players because they're doing an absolutely brilliant job. But we have some long-serving players at the club that once we move on and we bring in new blood, like we did with Vicario and Van de Ven in medicine, we will have a lot more depth and we will have a lot more options. And I think something that we noticed in the last couple of games that we were losing, the players were getting tired and that's why we're conceding so late. And And... And today we had more legs, you know, with with Besuma and Papasar in the middle. You know, the, the the game was different. We had a lot more energy in the middle, and even Kulisevsky with them. We 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 won the ball and we finished strong. And that's why I think that's why he keeps putting four subs in because to maintain that level of energy. But when he doesn't have quality on the bench and he's bringing in Hoiberg and he's bringing in someone who doesn't cover the role adequ adequately enough and i think but i'm fully on board postocoglu i don't think but to be fair to be fair chris and, you, and you've heard me say this before i was fully on board with with jose i was fully on board with 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 conte but we were doing well at that time and i thought where is this project going but honestly honestly postocoglu what he's done at the football club in this yeah. short amount of time yeah, with the with the resources that he has, because because we lost Harry, we lost the best player. He doesn't have Harry. Imagine if he had Harry at the club still. Imagine, just imagine if we had Harry Kane at the club still. I think we'd be miles ahead in this project. But I'm fully on board this manager. I love the guy and I love what he's doing, and I'm ready to to, to lose a couple of games like we've been doing because I think the players in the club will learn from it and we will. And we will see where we are as a football club because we know where the holes are now. When we lose a couple of games and we make certain mistakes, like you doggy did the mistake versus West Ham, but the boy is young. It's okay. He's he's a brilliant footballer. And one my, my only criticism of Postokoglu, which which he till the end of the season he probably will still. I want to see the kids brought in earlier. I wanted to see Jamie Donnelly brought in when we were four 0 right away. Bring him in. Let's see what what he has. Let's see let's see Dorrington. Let's see some of the kids have been playing brilliant football in the academy, and I really want to see them play. And I really want to see them play twenty minutes against Premier League opposition, not not two three minutes. I want to see them have a chance, and I don't want to see them played in the FA Cup. <laughs> I want to see the first team played in the FA Cup. That's probably something that we'll speak in January, but I want to see the kids play now. Especially when it's four 0 and the game is done, bring them in. Give them twenty minutes. I don't know if if, if you guys agree as well. I'm I'm sure they will get the opportunities, uh, Melvin. It's great to see that Jamie Donnelly came on. You know, it was only a couple of minutes um, at Manchester City, and of course today as well. So you know, it's great to see that these players are going to get opportunities. Um, one thing I was going to say, and Joshua has, has written it for me, 
Um, and did say when he started, it will be a bumpy ride. Um, but, you know, even during those defeats in the last couple of weeks, we've seen signs that we are moving forward as a football club. And, you know, I know I keep saying it, only three points from top four, you know, almost halfway through the season. Um, Holly, let's come to you. Before we talk about um, the Nottingham Forest game on Friday, the transfer window is coming up in just a couple of weeks' time. What do Spurs need to do for Ange Postacoglu? What do you think Ange will be demanding in this January transfer window? Because as much as some fans do criticise the club and in transfer windows, when you look at the transfer window we had in the summer, you know, it's a major rebuild. And we brought in a number of real quality players. The whole of the spine of the team has changed. Hunmin Son going into the middle, up, up top. But Madison coming in, Van der Ven coming in, Vicario coming in. They've all been fantastic signs amongst others. Um, but, you know, to take the club forward and to put a smile on Ange Postacoglu's face and really give him, um, you know, the tools to move the club forward, what do we need to do in January? I think it's just fill some of the gaps. I know January is not the place to do all of that. Um, but like you said, this January, I'm actually a bit more excited, a bit more hopeful that we're going to do that. I think we've kind of all said tonight, we kind of want that striker. Um, we want a striker that's actually an out-and-out striker. Um, whether we get that in January might be another question. Um, but it would be so nice to give Richarlison someone to compete with. I know we've got Veliz, but again, he's only getting little minutes here and there. I don't think he's quite the end product already. I think somebody's already said that tonight. But I think for me, it'd be a striker to really show that intent that that's going to push us over the line in, mm. in the next half of the season. Um, but you know what? Like you said with, with the summer transfer, rather than pick and hope players out the tree that we think are going to become good, like we have before, it feels like there's actually a plan in place. And I hope in January, this has been something that Ange and the team have been obviously deciding amongst themselves way before um, the season even started. We Hopefully we had a plan in the first couple of games to try and find out what kind of player we want to get. I don't want to be a last minute, oh dear, we need a striker, let's get him in now. I want it to be a planned, a pre-planned one, which I, I hope it will be because I feel like we're heading in a better direction this season, um, especially like we said from the summer transfer windows. So yes, for me, even if we just bring in a striker that's going to do the job up top, that I'm happy. Rich, Holly says they're bringing a striker. I know a lot of fans are saying exactly the same thing. We need to bring in a striker. Um, what does that mean for Richarlison? What does that mean for Hunmin Son? Hunmin Son going back out to the left? Because we do have, you know, that forward line. We know that we have got a lot of versatility where, you know, players can play in a number of different positions. Is it going to be another player to come in um, and perhaps can play centrally, but can also play out wide. Yeah, and, and whether we're going to get that player in January, I'm not. I'm not sure, especially at the level yeah. that that Andrew won. I think um, those centre back um, positions are more important. To be completely honest, obviously, you look at the issues that we've had in recent weeks when we've had the suspension and injuries out, and then you're playing your left and right back as centre backs, and just. Just not, yeah, not the spatial awareness, not the, uh, not the ability in the air. Um, I think playing one and Davis, obviously, he's played quite a lot in in that centre back role, but um, two, too much. And obviously, in the Premier League, with the quality of opp opposition, which I said earlier, every team's got those those players that can uh, that can hurt you. I think those centre back uh, positions are. Um, are more important to be completely honest. I'd like to see, I'd like to see a striker come in maybe in the summer and um, really go for it. Uh, and whether we get one or two players in those attacking positions in the summer, I think maybe we, we've got like Richarlison and the kind of surgeons of Richarlison from now into the end of the season, and hopefully can continues to build on the confidence that he's got today. Yeah, of course, Ryan writes on screen now. Chris, remember that Son, Sar and Basuma will be gone in January. How should the uh, management handle that? It's going to be very difficult because Ange Postacoglu is not going to have a fully fe uh, strength squad uh, until February. And of course, um, you know, the, the players will be gone straight after that um, that game against Bournemouth uh, here at the Southern Hotspur Stadium uh, on the 31st of December. So they'll be gone early, early January. They could be gone throughout the whole month. Um, so they could be missing a, a number of games. Um, Melvin, let's come to you very quickly before we move on to the Nottingham Forest game on Friday. Um, as an absolute minimum, what do uh, Spurs need to give Postacoglu in January? I think a centre-back would be ideal. 
probably just in case you know ugh, another injury occurs you know to to Medis uh, to uh, Romero or or Van de Ven or if Romero gets another sus lengthy suspension which is probably something that the club needs to accept that's going to happen because it's part of his game and it's it's all it's what it, the bad side is also what makes him good because certain certain some of those tackles you know and end up being in goals or or really really good attacking moments the gentleman, the state. when he wins the ball like that you know running running like that some people call it rash but some of them lead to goals or, or really really good chances so yeah so we need a center back for cover a really really good one probably you know someone another van der ven would be amazing another another find like him i think i think the recruitment going to data really really helped because vicario and van der ven came out of nowhere even though we waited for them and we were patient but they were both brilliant signings and and people complained that we didn't spend mega mega money on on this or that but i just i just trust that Postokoglu in his system in, in 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 the years of experience that he has the, the way he's been playing he's been playing this for like 20 30 years and i just i just think he knows what player is going to fit in his system i think he knows what character he wants in his dressing room something that he's really said that is really important to him something that the right character you just saw pedro poro and and him you know hugging after one of the goals you know you just need that kind of player that wants to come to the football club wants to play wants to win especially wants to win has that real fight inside of them and some of the players we got uh, i was there for the i'm, I'm just going to say this really short story i was there for the liverpool game in the south stand and i went to watch vicario warm up and i and i went right to the edge and and, and he was more than maybe two meters away from me and I was yelling in Italian because I know some Italian. And I was trying to get his attention to look at me. And he did not even flinch. That's the level of... Stop the level. putting that goalkeeper off, Melvin. Yeah, yeah. I, wanted, I just wanted to say, you know, good job or something. Or, or even look, he didn't even flinch. And I was yelling at him. I was like, uh, trying to get his attention. He didn't move. I mean, not even like turn like this to look. I mean, the level of concentration that man had before the game. I was thinking... I'll sleep better knowing that that moment happened because I, that I, it's our, my football club is safe in your hands. Honestly, that moment is imprinted in my head because I tried to speak to him before a football match and he didn't flinch. He was so concentrated on the job ahead. So any character or any signing like him, I'm not going to say a specific player because we all know where we need recruitment because I'm sure Levy will do his Levy thing and try to get someone on loan with an option to buy this if this happens. I'm sure that will happen. I'm sure Ange will push for the signings to happen early in the window because if we're going to... Do you know what I'm Melvin? I'm, I'm not going to criticise. If Spurs want to go out and get some players on loan, as long as they come in and do a job for us... And the, early. The, the, early the, in the window. Exactly. Uh, early deals in the window that um, is going to help Ange take this yeah. club forward and, and perhaps get us back into Europe the next season then you know so be it because football is, is changing all the time and these deals you know many complicated deals are, are, are now done you know it's, it's, it's not really like you know back in the day where you just go out and buy a player you know you give the money and that's it job done you know all these deals are now very very complicated so however Spurs get deals done as long yeah. as the recruitment is really good then we're all going to be happy Holly let's move to you because um Actually, before we do go on to the Nottingham Forest game, I just want to make sure the time that I spent away from this podcast, we did give uh, the amount of love that we should have done to players like Ben Davis and Richarlison. Is that right? Brilliant. Right, OK. Nottingham Forest up next on Friday evening. Uh, of course, Nottingham Forest at the moment, a 16th in the Premier League table. Of course, Brendan Johnson facing his old club on Friday at the City Ground. They have played 16, they've won only three, they've drawn five, they've lost eight. They've got 14 points, they're five points uh, off the bottom three and five points uh, off being a mid-table team. Um, Nottingham Forest drew 1-1 at Wolves on Saturday and last week they lost 5-0 away at Fulham. Their last win was at home against Aston Villa, believe it or not, uh, beating them 2-0 on the 5th of November. So they've not won for over a month. Since then, four defeats and one draw. Um, Holly, how do you see this game going on Friday, are you confident after today? 
Yes, I think it's a must win. Obviously, when you've read those stats out, obviously it's a bit strange that they obviously managed to beat Villa at, at their gaff. So hopefully that we can go there and not lose them. Um, because I think coming off of this win um, is something that we need to push for momentum. I mean, we've all spoken about, obviously, after Forest, there's a, there's a couple of fixtures you're kind of looking at, we should be beating these teams. I know no game in the Premier League is easy, but on paper and how we're playing, we should be beating them. So I hope we go there, get a couple of early goals and, and seal the deal off. M more like we did today, I think. Holly, what score prediction are you going to go with? Oh, man, I hate these. Um, I'm going to go 3-1. 3-1. 3-1. Rich, what about you? Do you think Ange Postacoglu will make a number of changes or do you think he will stay with the same team uh, that beat Newcastle today? Yeah, very. I think very similar to, to today's team. Um, same kind of philosophy. Um, and obviously away from home it's just a little bit different with not having the crowd uh, behind you that that 12th man but um i feel confident that the players will have enough time to recover and then regroup and then obviously look at the back at the performance today and um take a lot of confidence uh, for that moving forward into the forest game and um like holly confident as well that we can put on that that performance and we need to um, because it is all about consistency. Melvin, oh, actually, Rich, what's your score prediction? <sighs> you nearly got away with it. There. I thought you were going to skirt past me on that. Uh, 2 0. 2 0 Spurs. Melvin, what about you? Melvin, you're on mute. Oh, I didn't really, uh, well, I could change it now because you don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm going to say 4-1. I'm going to say the same. I think it'll be a high-scoring game. I think we're going to get better and better with each game. And I think the sweet spot's going to be in February, March. But I think we're going to start scoring more and more goals now. Final question for you all. And I know Richard absolutely loves this question. Richard, let's start with you on this. Where do you think Spurs will finish at the end of the season? Uh, I've, even when, I, when we were at the top of the league, I said fourth. So, um, and I think that's where you look at the other teams um, and Newcastle have going through this slump now. I think Aston Villa, as soon as they get beaten at home, I think that their confidence will be knocked. I think Arsenal obviously play some great football, but obviously, again, losing to Villa, that's a bit of a reality check. Man City obviously going through their little bit of a slump. But I think um, I think we, there's, there's four or five good teams that don't involve Man United and Chelsea that are going to be um, up there in the top four. Eight nil. Who said eight nil? <laughs> eight nil. Oh my goodness, James. Yeah, you've had a good night tonight, aren't you mate. That's it. It's all That's right it. though. One day you'll wake up and you'll probably say three or four nil. So you're going to go full then, Rich. Melvin, what are you going to go for? Um, I think we'll finish third. I just have a feeling. Um, yeah, I just think n not being in Europe will will make a difference. And I just think this poor run of form it won't last. And even even with the if we make any January signings, we'll be really really strong. I think the the system will start to to gel more, work more, more goals. If we make any signings in January, people will recover. We'll bring. Van der Ven and Madison back, Benton Core. Hopefully, we don't pick up any new injuries. And, and yeah, I think we'll we'll do even better the second part of the season than we did in the first. And we've did really well in the first part of the season. So I mean, people were talking about relegation for Spurs early in the season. People putting us, you know, sixteenth in their prediction of the table. You know, so so yeah, I think we'll finish. Third, I think City. Sorry, I think Arsenal and Liverpool are quite strong, and I think we'll do better than City. I just have this weird feeling. Thank you, Melvin. Um, Holly, I just wanted to give you the last word on this uh, on this podcast because, uh, as a female uh, content creator, I just wondered what your thoughts are. What Jerry Barton said in the last couple of days. <laughs> it's funny you ask me this because I think I tweeted something out and I said I was going to leave it because I'll lose my head. Um, I think for me, I just enjoy what I'm doing and I'm not going to let somebody say that I can't do it. So that's kind of my kind of thoughts on it. If if I'm enjoying something and I want to carry on doing it, so what? That's, that's how I roll. I think for him to come out and say that, 
I don't really know what's going through his head. I think we all have the 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 platform, the chance to have our own opinions. Um, and I don't know why my opinion should differ from someone else's opinion. We, we're, we're all in a world where we can have our own free speech. Well, and I think... All right. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, and, and who's Jerry Barton saying that it's not for anybody from a different sex to have the same kind of platform as, as him? I know. It's bizarre. And I think that's just the way I look at it. I was like, if he wants to be an egg and he wants to say oh, what he wants to say, so be it. But I'm not going to listen to it. And I, I think that's what many uh, female people think. I think if you let these people have airtime and allow them to say their thing and you let it get to you, then for me, it's, it's just thin air. He's just talking into air. That's how I see it. <laughs> Holly, on that note, let's promote your channel. Uh, if, if you don't subscribe to Holly's channel already, do get over there and hit that subscribe button. And uh, Holly, what can people expect from you and your channel? Uh, yeah, so I just do um, Holly Sorts says live every Monday at seven. I kind of get guests on a bit like this. Um, we just chat through the game, uh, basically. So, yeah, no, honestly, it's it's great to come on this channel and, and say my bit because it's, it's nice not to be the host for once. So, uh, no, thank you, Chris, for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Holly actually stays there the whole time and the, the host doesn't run <laughs> off to do a TV interview. So, <laughs> Holly, thank you so much. No yeah. worries. <laughs> Um, Rich, lovely to have you back. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you Friday in Nottingham. Um, you will. Yes. Uh, what are you up to at the moment? Where can people find you? And uh, training again for another trophy just, win? Just running, obviously, back back, back from New York. We uh, did sub three hours for the marathon, which is not bad for an old man. Um, yeah, still training hard, working um, across the EDR community, like promoting football and the rest of sport. That is inclusive, fully inclusive to everybody and anybody, um, and I think those messages are really important, especially in the the light of the the Joey Barton situation. So yeah, yep. just continue to do what I'm doing and enjoying, obviously, watching the Spurs win, lose or draw, but especially when they win. Well, we look forward to having you back on next week after the Forest game, Rich and uh, Melvin. Thanks so much again for joining us. Um, what's the weather like over in Malta at the minute? Um, well, we, we call it cold, but it's probably not as cold and, and wet as, as, as England right now. It's, it's only around 17, 18. But yeah, this is cold for us. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, good to be on after another victory, you know, keeping the winning streak going for, for me. And um, yeah, just 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 before when you were away, I uh, I checked on Twitter and everyone was asking, where's Chris? And, and, and I see on X, Chris Cowlin is live doing a podcast. I said... Wait, why is Chris doing another podcast? And then I click on it, and, and it's it's myself. And I thought you were the one. <laughs> yeah. So everyone was asking, "Where's Chris?" But I knew where you were. But I I see it there, and I thought Chris was doing another another show. But th then I click on it, and it was it was just us. But yeah, it was a moment where I started just going like this. Oh, yeah, brilliant to be on, and and I'm happy with the win. So um, I can't wait to be you know back on talking about another victory, hopefully around. Uh, during the Christmas period, you know, I love the football around the Christmas period, and and hopefully we get, you know, three, four, five wins on on the trot, and 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 bring us back up the table where we belong. So yeah, come on, you Spurs. We know things are good when Melvin's smiling. So as long as Melvin's smiling, <laughs> we know everything is great. Um, Holly, Melvin, and Richard, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening, and uh, we will be back again very soon with another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. Uh, Look forward to next Friday. Of course, uh, let's hope the Spurs can get another three points and uh, let's hope that we can maintain that challenge for a place in next year's Champions League. Until the next time, come on you Spurs. <laughs>